Welcome to Unsightly Opinions. If you're new, I'm Tamara, and today we're gonna talk about all of the different kinds of working dogs. It has come to my notice over the last 15 years of being a guide dog user that not a lot of people know the difference between working dogs or what working dogs actually do. What's the difference between a service dog versus a working dog versus a guide dog? So we're gonna create a bit of a flow chart today to kind of work out which dogs fit into which categories. I do want to make note that there are many different types of animals that work in service roles with people. There are guide ponies, there are helper monkeys, there are plow horses, but today we're going to focus on dogs specifically because they are the most common type of working animal. First, let's start by talking about all dogs. Most dogs fall into one of a couple of categories. They're either wild, pets, or working dogs. We're gonna focus on the domesticated dogs for right now. Where working dogs differ from pets is that working dogs do a task for their owner. We have hunting dogs, which might bring prey out into the open or retrieve prey once it's been hurt. We have herding dogs, which might move livestock from one area to another. There are sled dogs, which work in teams to help people in the far north travel from one area to another where it's not passable by road. There are guard dogs, which might help protect a property from intruders, either commercially or in a private residence. There are search and rescue dogs, which work in a variety of capacities, either after disaster, helping find people in rubble of buildings, or if somebody gets lost in either an avalanche or in the woods, dogs can help human search parties locate those people more easily. There are therapy dogs, and therapy dogs are not service dogs. That tends to be something that people don't understand. Therapy dogs are not service dogs because they do a task for someone other than the handler. Therapy dogs help people with psychological or emotional upsets or help deal with stress in a variety of locations like schools, hospices, hospitals, workplaces, and nursing homes. There are a number of varieties of police dogs like sniffer dogs and detection dogs. Police dogs typically work in one of two or three different areas. They may also be search and rescue dogs, but they are more often detection or sniffer dogs, which seek out to smell a variety of specific objects, whether it is drugs or gunpowder or some other type of illegal contraband. These help keep countries safe from terrorism and other illegal activities. The police may also use dogs in apprehension where they are bringing people in who want to evade custody. Not all police dogs are trained in all of those tasks. And it's not always obvious just by looking at the dog what they are and are not trained to do. And finally, we have service dogs, also known as assistance dogs. Service dogs is probably the most recognizable category of working dog. There are many different types of service dogs. There are hearing or hearing assistance dogs that work with people who are hard of hearing or deaf to alert them to a variety of sounds. That might be a baby crying, doorbells, a telephone ringing, someone calling the handler's name, or other tasks specifically needed by the handler. There are also ASD or FASD, Autism Spectrum Disorder, or Fetal Alcohol Spectrum Disorder Assistance or Support Dogs. These dogs might do a variety of tasks for the person with autism and possibly their family. For many who abscond or tend to bolt or run away, the dog can be grounding and act as a tether. The dog might also help de-escalate emotionally unsettling situations. The dog may also help to prevent any kind of self-harming type behaviors. But each dog is specifically trained to the needs of the individual so these tasks may vary from person to person. There are several varieties of medical alert dogs. These dogs typically respond to a very specific medical condition. There are diabetic alert dogs who alert to high or low blood sugars to let the person know that they either need to take insulin or they need to eat sugar. There are allergy alert dogs who will smell out or sniff the air to determine if a specific allergen is present. These are typically more common with children, but there are allergy alert dogs for people of all ages. There are also epilepsy alert and epilepsy response dogs. Dogs in this category may do both tasks or one or the other. 
These dogs will either alert before a seizure occurs or do specific tasks during or after, whether it's getting help, doing deep pressure therapy, or some other specific task required by the person to keep them safe. There are also mobility assistance dogs. These are dogs that are trained to perform specific tasks to help a person maintain more independent mobility, whether that's opening doors, retrieving fallen items. There are some dogs that might provide stability to the owner with a support harness. There are psychiatric service dogs, and a person might require different things depending on the psychiatric condition that they have. For some people, it might be de-escalating emotional responses. It might be providing deep pressure therapy. It might be helping relieve anxiety. For others, it might be interrupting self-harming behaviors or grounding. And finally, we have guide dogs. This is my area of expertise. Guide dogs do guiding style tasks. Some mobility dogs do do some guiding style work, but guide dog is a term typically reserved for people who are blind or low vision. Guide dogs will help individuals travel in a straight line. They will help people find specific landmarks like seats, benches, doors, escalators, or anything else that has been trained with the dog as a specific location. It's important to note that a guide dog does not make the decision to cross a street. It is the handler that makes that decision, and then the guide dog makes the decision as to whether or not it is safe to obey that command. If the guide dog determines that it is not safe to cross the street, they will prevent the handler from crossing. This is called intelligent disobedience. And as far as I am aware, it is the only type of service dog that does intelligent disobedience as a task. So it's safe to say that guide dogs are both service dogs and working dogs, but not all working dogs are guide dogs. You may also have heard the term seeing eye dog or leader dog. Leader dogs and seeing eye dogs are dogs from very specific guide dog schools. It's just like saying Kleenex versus tissue. You've probably wondered why I haven't talked about emotional support animals. Emotional support animals are a little bit tricky to put into any of these categories because they don't follow very specific training guidelines and rules. Emotional support animals are typically pets, that provide emotional comfort to people with a variety of conditions. Emotional support animals do not have the same rights as many working dogs. Not all working dogs have the right to enter public spaces. You wouldn't have a sled dog or a sheep dog in a grocery store. But other types of working dogs, like police dogs and service dogs, are allowed in public spaces. Where I am, emotional support animals are not allowed in public spaces but laws and regulations change depending on where you live. So it is important to know what the rules and regulations are in the area where you live. It's also important to know that most service dogs, while they wear a cape, vest, or harness, do not need to wear any kind of visible symbol to be allowed in a public space. Nor are people who have service dogs required to carry ID. It can be difficult to distinguish a service dog from an emotional support animal, and there is a large issue of fake service dogs saying an emotional support animal is a service dog. It makes it very difficult when untrained animals are in public spaces that shouldn't be because it makes it difficult as a service dog user not only to be accepted into public spaces from people who had a previous bad experience, but for the safety of our service dogs. I hope this video helped demystify all of the different types of working dog, which dogs fall into which categories, and what tasks they do. If you'd like to see more content like this, if you'd like to know more about guide dogs specifically, I have many more videos planned. Let me know what you'd like to see. I post most Wednesdays and most Saturdays. If you'd like to keep up with me between posts, I have an accessible Twitch stream every Tuesday and Sunday night, 7.30 Mountain Standard, and you can check out my social media linked below. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.